Hi everyone, how are you doing today? I hope you're doing really well. Today I'm gonna to chat with you about this jacket that I just finished. Before we get started, I'm Sharon. Welcome to my channel, Sharon Sews. I am so happy that you're here. As I said, we're gonna chat about the jacket that I just sewed, or I should say that I just finished. This is one of my whips, work in process, work in progress, whatever you wanna call it, that I started 2020 with. I will link the video above if you haven't seen the one that I talked about, how many I had, and I'll put it in the comments below. So this is Vogue 1574. This is a Sandra Bitsina design. It was released in 2017. So this jacket is one of them that I started when the pattern first came out, I bought it as soon as they saw it. You know, there's something about Sandra Bitsina, her designs, sometimes when they come out, we look at them, or at least I look at them and I think, oh, I don't know about that. But I feel like she's always just a little bit ahead of the trends. I don't know if you've been watching any of the 2020 spring uh, fashion forecasts, but peplums are back. Maybe not exaggerated like they were a couple of years ago, but they are coming back. And this has a peplum. She released it, what, 2017? And the trend is back. I started sewing it right after the pattern was released. This is fabric from SR Harris. It's a stretch woven suiting. I didn't know exactly the, the content because they don't label the contents at that warehouse fabric store, which is a super awesome fabric store. But I think you know that if you've been watching my videos or reading my blog. So anyway, I started this in 2017. And those of you that have been following me for a while and reading my blog know that I had a really weird medical condition. Uh, with some really odd symptoms and my sewing pretty much came to a halt. This is one of those jackets that did not get completed. So I um, planned on doing it in 2020. That's one of my goals to complete any of the whips that I had brought with me from Minnesota to Texas. I took the time to finish this one, just needed some lining. And in today's video, I'm going to show you the insides of this jacket and everything that was involved. I can't do so long because obviously it was partially sewn already, but I really hope you enjoy it. I also got some video of me modeling it as well as some pictures. This is a great jacket. I really enjoyed sewing it. If you're looking for a little bit of a challenge, go for it. The other thing I want to say about Sandra Pizzina patterns, which I have noticed, and this one also, she includes really great little details, little tips that you don't get in your typical pattern instructions. I would highly recommend checking out her patterns. Let's have a look. The pattern I used is Vogue 1574. This is a Sandra Bitsina Today's Fit pattern from Vogue Patterns. It came out in 2017. There are 17 pattern pieces that includes the lining. Here's the line drawing to give you a better idea of what the jacket looks like. on my dress mannequin and here is the back view on my dress mannequin and the side view so you can see how the back is just slightly lower than the sides in the front now that peplin is designed with a curved pattern piece and also seaming which is making it stand out the way it does it's actually a pretty cool design there's also pockets inseam pockets in the front of the peplin Oh man, as you can see, that peplin is really pronounced. No, there is optional piping that you can add along the center front and the collar. As you can see, I did add it. I think it just adds a really nice little designer touch and really emphasizes the collar. I did hand baste it in place before I stitched it in place. I didn't use a piping foot. I just used my zipper foot and stitched as close as I could to the edge of the piping. This structure on the back of the jacket. This is interfacing on the upper back. It calls for sew-in interfacing, but I didn't have any, so I used fusible. There's also interfacing down at the lower end of the sleeves. It's a two-piece sleeve with a vent, and there's interfacing on those vents.
there are two inseam pockets designed right into the peplum. Your center front is interfaced, as is that collar, which you saw earlier. There are shoulder pads. They don't specify the size. I used one quarter inch shoulder pads that I had on hand. And then there is interfacing used for the sleeve head. Again, I had facing is attached to the lining and I did include my labels. I added my positive message labeling. I think this one says you are, let's see what it says. You are enough. I also have a handmade with love and then I just put a medium size tag in there because I don't have specific number sizes. The back facing is interfaced and it's cut out of the fabric and then it's attached to the lining fabric in the back. Now you're instructed to hand stitch the back facing to the collar seam. And I'm never sure if I'm doing it right. If someone more experienced wants to tell me if I did it correctly, I would love that. I just did a catch stitch up there at the seam line. Let's talk about that hem. What you're seeing here is two inch bias tape. Now I had to make my own. I went to the store and I picked up a package and I got it home and I didn't even realize I picked up um, blanket binding, which is not the same as bias tape. So I made my own out of some gingham that I happened to have around. I had to hand stitch all of that bias binding in place by hand. I just said that, didn't I? That's because I'm not a big fan of hand stitching. And that was about a hundred inches. This is one of those cool details that Sandra Pizzina provides. Before you attach the lining to the front facing, you do a Hong Kong finish at two inches along the bottom. And that takes care of that raw edge sometimes that you get with your jackets. Now, remember I said how much I love to hand stitch, ha ha. I had to hand stitch that lining in place too. So that was another 100 inches. And as you can see, it looks like I forgot to clip something there. The full leather tabs I stitched on using a Teflon presser foot and just stitch in place with the sewing machine. And here they are in the front of the jacket. You're just instructed to try the jacket on and place them where it works best for you. And mine are a little bit lower than shown on the pattern cover. I use the same tabs on the end of the sleeve. You can use buttons if you want to. Okay, so this is so annoying. This broke right after I took photos. So now I'm gonna have to find a new closure. enjoyed the video. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. That way you won't miss any future videos. Thank you so much for being here and I will see you real soon. Happy sewing! Hey Tandy, come here. Come here puppy. Hello, hello. Should we put you on camera? Here's my little puppy girl. Yeah, she's the one that distracts me all the time. Wait, what? Do you want to go out again? Oh, there's dogs. Yeah. Okay, here we go. She must be outside. I wonder if I should make her the same height I am. Maybe I would like to be this tall, actually. I added this in the blooper so that you could see that this jacket really needs a slender silhouette on the bottom half.